And my crypto here. I hope we're all having a wonderful day. I know I am. It's a little bit cloudy here in the UK. No sun. <laughs> so I will be on holiday probably next week and maybe the week after, but I will try and get some videos in there if possible. Now, remember, I'm not a financial advisor and none of this is financial advice and none of the information provided in this video should ever be seen or taken as a signal to buy or to sell. But first, we look at these crypto bubbles and looking rather red out there, rather grim. But again, if you're here for the long term, this shouldn't affect you in any way. Now, if we look here, we're down three ranks to 77. We're still under that 1 billion market cap at 924 million. Current price looking okay, $76.57. 24 hour volume at 15 million. Uh, and as we can see, we're down 0.1% in the hour and we are down 4.2% in the day, but we're still 9.1% up in the week. So if you're a short-term trader, a nice little bit of profit there for you. Now, as we can see, things aren't looking great. There's a little bit of a dip in the market. People are feeling quite frustrated, bored, all the rest of it, and still chasing those meme coins, as we've seen from some of what's been going on on Twitter from some influencers. But hey, got to do what they've got to do. I'm diversified. Um, but I would say I'm more diversified in coins that have some utility. So if we look here, now I put a post out, which it was yesterday evening, which is quite interesting. If we look, um, this is the lowest I've seen spot exchange reserves in the last few months, currently sitting at 236,000 just over. That's a sizable drop, approximately 120,000 quant from last year. So June 17th, 2023, where it was 356,000. Now, that's really important because time and patience, this is all it's about. Now, if we look at some of the comments here, um, we can see that someone said that's nearly two and a half thousand tokens a week gone with Quant, which is quite true. Now, if we see that again, another 120,000 leave the spot exchange, we're going to be really low um, at the point where I think that some some shock will come. Now, some people believe that we're already in that shock, which is, could be quite true. Now, if we look at the overall, so from back in 2021, these are all, you know, news events. We see these drops, news events, news events. And what will be the next news event that we'll see a lot of this spot exchange reserves drop even further? Now, I think that comes from here. Now, we see this article from Quant. We see we see here, distributed ledger technology, the need for standardization. And I think this is where we see Quant really come into its own. And this was a document from Dr. Luke Riley. Together with other members of the International Association for Trusted Blockchain Application Standards Committee, we conducted a survey on the standardization of digital ledger technology. Within the survey, we identified and categorized existing publications and working groups have provided recommendations on where to focus future standardization efforts. Standardization can be defined as a process of establishing best practices within a particular domain, as well as providing an indication of domain's maturity. By adhering to specific standards, implementations can reduce the number of silos seamlessly achieve interoperability with other solutions, improve and maintain security and decrease risk of fragmented ecosystem. Standardization is a prerequisite for full enterprise adoption of DLT. We know that adopting a standardized approach can drastically reduce time spent on research and development and minimize the risk associated with DLT adoption. Much of the fragmented landscape of DLT networks is built on technology with little to no built-in interoperability. The DLTs to interoperate on a native level, industry-wide standardization on the underlying protocols and data formats is crucial. In our recent paper, Implementing Secure Bridges, Learning from the Secure Asset Transfer Protocol. Now, this is really important because I believe, again, I think this is the start when we see a massive dip because we know who's leading this. Quant with ISO TC307. And he says here, we use the analogy of wall gardens to describe DLT networks, which alludes to the inability for assets to flow freely between networks, which we know is one of the biggest barriers to widespread DLT adoption. The paper also looks at how reported security issues in proprietary solutions are a key motivation for standardization on open protocols. An example of this is crypto bridges, which were exploited to steal over a billion dollars worth of assets in 2022 alone. The sheer scale of these attacks have been a catalyst 
for change and is a key driver of standardization on open protocols. The first version of the survey titled SOK, Distributed Ledger Technology Standardization, available as a preprint, while further efforts to extend the work in an app is planned. The list of publications and working groups are also available on the Open GitHub repository where we invite others to contribute to the discovery of new publications and working group. Now, I think this is very important because I believe personally this will be the catalyst because once we see um, some regulations, we start to see regulations in stable coins, which we're going to talk about in a moment, and then regulations of staking within the UK. This could open the door for Quant to open up those community gateways once that regulation and standardization is adopted. Now, there was lots of talk on the IETF, that data tracker, that the call for adoption for SATP was in July. Well, we are in July now. We're still waiting to see. Now, we also see this. This was back in April. Now, the UK to issue new crypto stablecoin legislation by July. This is obviously when the Conservative government, we see here, Bim Afalami, the country passed a landmark bill in June 2023, which laid the foundation for stablecoins and other crypto to be treated as regulated financial activities. And we can see here, the UK will issue new legislation for stablecoins, as well as crypto staking exchange and custody by June or July this year, Economic Secretary Bim Afalami said. Now, a lot of people were worried that Labour wouldn't be on the train when it comes to crypto, but they are. I think they are probably more inclined, um, you know, looking at some of the data that I've read over the last couple of weeks. And we see here the Conservative Party led government has said it wants to make the UK a global hub for crypto and passed legislation last year to recognise crypto and stable coins as a regulated financial activities in this country. The UK government is set to put forward legislation for stable coins as well as for crypto staking exchange custody by June and July, which we already know about. So if this comes about, I believe that once we see the stable coin regulation, we see the staking. Now, obviously, Quant being a UK based um, fintech, I believe that once we see this, once we see these stable coins and staking regulated, legislated, we will see this next big dipper on here where we see a lot of these coins disappear. You've got to remember a lot of people will want to get on board with this because then they see some passive income from the tokens that they hold. So I believe this will be the next catalyst when it happens or if it happens sometime this year. Now, we also see this from Finextra, Stablecoin, how will it impact the UK payments regime? And we can see here, this was the 16th of July, 2024. And he says here, when I pop to my local news agents for my Friday night treat, it is still jarring to find that I must spend at least three pound when using my debit card. This means instead of one, I have to buy two bars of chocolate. It's not good for my waistline, shrinkflation, and it's not ideal for the shop owner either. They are trying to cover the fees imposed by the likes of Visa and MasterCard for using debit or credit cards with the average processing fees of debit cards said to be 0.28% of transaction value of every transaction. Cards have come to account for the overwhelming proportion, more than 85% of money spent. We have become increasingly reliant on US card giants Visa and MasterCard, which account for 95% of all transactions using UK issued cards. Consumers' choice to pay with plastic and the dominance of the US card giant leaves UK businesses with little to no choice but to pay the fees set by these networks. A recent investigation by the UK's payment system regulator concluded that MasterCard and Visa do not face effective competition constraints in the UK as there's no alternative providers. Could a digital pound or sterling stable coins have the potential to provide the needed alternative? How will the introduction of stable coin impact the payment system? A decision on whether to introduce a digital pound is still way off, as they say here. However, the Bank of England's proposal for UK's new regulatory framework for private stable coin based retail payments could potentially pave the way for stable coins to offer a viable alternative. The Gilmore Central Financial Technology provides detailed assessment in our response to the Bank of England's recent consultation on this. Under the bank's proposals, the UK is currently the only jurisdiction in the world offering stable coin issuers regulated access to central bank reserves, something that might prove a game changer in terms of the suitability and adoption of stable coin for widespread use in everyday payments. Now, if this comes about, then we will see the staking as well. He says here, a dual tiered regime is proposed. Stable coin would be regulated by the FCA, but any stable coin that is systemic would also be regulated by the Bank of England, subject to additional privileges and burdens. If you look at the FCA regime, it's not too far from 
from the existing business models and asset-backed stablecoins where they issue their own coins and invest the proceeds in safe assets to earn the return, albeit FCA regulation and supervision would ensure the quality and transparency of these backing assets. Once the stablecoin is adjudged to be big enough to be part of the UK financial system, it will be moved into the systemic regime of the Bank of England, requiring full backing of its coins with unremunerated central bank reserves on one for one basis. These reserves wouldn't earn any interest. This would make the coins incredibly safe, but takes away the stablecoin issues business model, thus moving into transaction fees as an alternative revenue source is something any systemic stablecoin would have to consider. Since consumers do not face transaction fee when paying with cards, stablecoins might need to compete with cards networks on merchant fees and hope merchants would encourage consumer adoption. A full reserve backing would enable 24-7 real-time settlement. Stablecoins could also compete with card networks on the speed of settling payments, which is also important for merchants. Currently, any new entrant into the retail payments market would have to rely on bank deposits as a settlement asset, thus also rely on bank legacy systems. Under proposed stablecoin regulations with access to central bank reserves, this would no longer be the case. Private stablecoins could issue their own settlement asset and operate their own payment rails. While interoperability with existing forms of money and payment systems would be essential, this would nevertheless allow new players to bypass gatekeepers and legacy systems. Meanwhile, the full reserve requirement would make stablecoins a safer and more liquid settlement asset than bank deposits. And as you can see there, something really important there, while interoperability with existing forms of money and payment systems would be essential. Now we know who does that. Now, as I'm looking back here, and I've done this before and looked at what all these big moves were. And they were all news events, news events, news events. And I have done a video on that and given and provided the detail of why I think these happened. And I believe when we get that regulation, when we get that new legislation, whether that be SATP, whether the government decide to push something out this year, which is looking likely, I believe at that point, then we start to see quant move on staking. So there you go, guys, just a quick update and looking at all the news that's coming in. Um, yes, it's quiet, but I believe while there's quiet, there's something brewing in the background. So there you go, guys, all the best and I'll catch you later.